Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Happy Thank Sabbath. you for joining us for another study in Revelation 7. Trumpets, it's been a while for us at least. If you're watching yeah. this on YouTube, it's it, the next no study. time has passed. Yeah, right. but for us, a, a it's couple, like the couple of months. Of, yeah, yeah, it's no a good example. No idea how much time's gone by. Right? Yeah. So it's been a little bit for us, So, but we're getting back into the groove of things, so we're glad you could join us. If you are joining us on YouTube, what do you do? Like and subscribe and share. Yes. Click the like button. Share the gospel. Share the gospel. Mm -hmm. Click a button. Share. Click a button. Yep. Share the gospel. Get we had us. a wonderful sermon today on, yeah. you know. It was a really good sermon. Needing, needing it was a good sermon. Really motivate us to get out there and spread the gospel. Yeah. So it's easy right now. Very easy to do. It's only going to get harder. Yeah. So share the gospel. Um. I know I'm forgetting things already. What am I forgetting? Any announcements? Uh, announcements? Oh, he's See, got... See, they're one. already calling for the dad I joke. <laughs> I wanted to say it, but I knew you were going to tell me. Hold on a second. <laughs> you got any announcements of upcoming things uh, at all? Or? Nothing I think of. So, yeah, I guess like it's time for the dad either. joke. <laughs> Better be all a right. good one. Uh, it's going to be... It, well, I hope so. <laughs> Doive. All right. Where is a duck's favorite place to go for breakfast? The Quacker Barrel. The Quacker Barrel. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, look at you. Did you really? <laughs> okay. I was impressed. I feel like we should get another one now. There, I, got, was, I got more. It was that's too easy. <laughs> quacker Barrel is the, still open? The Quacker Barrel. I, yeah. I, is it? Yeah. I thought there's I There's like one in Colorado. Yeah. yeah. There's not very many left. Well, I think Go there's the one up coast. north there's and one then one exit. in Colorado Springs, I thought. Like, I don't know. But yeah. we're not here to talk about the cra the quacker uh, the cracker barrel. <laughs> the cracker barrel. Oh man. <laughs> Let's talk about Revelation. All right. Let's pray and we'll get going. <laughs> Father God in heaven, we thank you so much for this Sabbath day. We thank you for this time that we get to come together and open your word and study it. Lord, we need your spirit to guide us through this study. Be with our words and our thoughts, Lord. Uh, we pray that all we say would only point to you. Father, we thank you so much for all you've done for us, all you continue to do for us, and we pray that you will help motivate us to share the gospel. We thank you so much for your love, mercy, and forgiveness towards us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, we're on page 141 in the Seven Trumpets Syllabus. And again, for those of you online, we're just picking up where we left off. For those of you here, probably a little rusty, aren't you? Mm -hmm. I had to go back and <laughs> figure we'll out just where leave it was. at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to continue on uh, at the bottom of the page where it says the meaning of the word woe or alas that we had studied um, in the trumpets. The Greek word oai, 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 oai. And I, I always think the Spanish, you know, ay, ay, ay. Yeah. It's always in threes. And what is the purpose of it? It's kind of like... Emphasis. Yeah, I, I, or whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, like we're, we're seeing this and I thought it was... Uh, I just thought that was kind of interesting. It's usually an exclamatory interjection that pretends pain, calamity, suffering, and sorrow. The Septuagint, you'll see those three letters, LXX, means 70. Um, which is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old, Old Testament. Testament. Uh, the LXX and the New Testament use the word to describe divine retribution upon those who are unfaithful to what? The covenant. To the covenant. Okay, so let's go through Savannah and the Septuagint, um, go through each one of these points here uh, where this uh, is used. So we encourage you to look all of these verses up. So make sure you have a pen to write them down and go back and look over them. But we start off first in Isaiah 3, 11, and it's talking about an oracle against Jerusalem. And then in Jeremiah 4, 13, we're talking about an oracle against Jerusalem. And that's also we see in Jeremiah 4, verse 30 as well. Um, Jeremiah 10, 19 is talking about an oracle against Jerusalem. Jeremiah 50, verse 27, is an oracle against Babylon. We move to Ezekiel, chapter 2, verse 10, and it's talking about an oracle against Jerusalem. Nahum, 
chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, talks about an oracle against Nineveh. Zephaniah, chapter 3, 1 through 4, is an oracle against, again, Jerusalem. And then we move to Zechariah 11, verse 17, and we're talking about an oracle against the false shepherds. Right. And the, so that's all in the Old Testament. And what do they all have in common? The what word. do Jerusalem, Babylon, and Nineveh have in common? Stuff happened. They were destroyed. <laughs> that's right. Stuff happened. Yes. Yeah, yeah, some stuff stuff, happened. Some stuff. Join us in our Daniel study on Friday nights, and you'll, you'll uh, see a lot of this in reference to Jerusalem and uh, Babylon. What were you going to say there? Well, I was just going to say in all of these, it uses that word woe. Correct. Woe to the wicked. Woe to us. Woe to them. Mm -hmm. um, woe to the bloody city, speaking of Nineveh. Um, woe to the worthless shepherd. Yeah, you're going to read the, Zechariah. yeah, you're the New Testament one here. Yep. So why don't you <laughs> go with the New Testament here where, again, these words are used in other places. So in the New Testament, um, and you can write this in your syllabus, the, the very last one in Revelation 18.10 you see there, that's the only one that uses the word alas. All of the other ones are woe. So Matthew 18.7, you have woe to the one who mistreats a child. Matthew 23, 13, 14, 15, 16, 23, 25, 27, 29. That's why you get the syllabus. Good. So you can have all that. He's now an auctioneer on his side go, job. You can go back and slow that down. Yeah. FYI. We got, we got material to cover here. <laughs> That's woe to the scribes and the Pharisees. In Matthew 24, 19, it's woe to those who are alive during the tribulation. Mm -hmm. Matthew 26, 24, woe to the ones who betray, woe to the one who betrays the Son of Man. In Revelation 12, 12, woe to those who dwell upon the earth. And as I said, Revelation 18, 10, 16, and 19, it uses the word alas, but it's the woe upon the final fall of Babylon. Mm. Yeah, same Greek word, uh, English translation uh, difference. So your textual location of the three woes, uh, you want to re-familiarize yourself with what we studied previous to this mm -hmm. um, because it's a big deal. Why? Because of how taken out of context, not only Revelation is, but uh, the church, the church is not as bad, but the seals and the trumpets mm -hmm. and what goes on within the trumpets are very much taken out of context in the mainstream Christian world. Um, but even within our own church, you know, right. we find uh, uh, people, it, it's easy to be lazy when it comes to stuff where you really got to sharpen your pencil and, right. uh, and, and do your due diligence to understand. Yeah. Well, things. I mean, even as I was kind of looking forward and, and reading ahead, you know, you really do have to be diligent because within the same chapter, you'll have one, you know, a couple verses talking about the first woe and the second talking about, but it doesn't say that it's talking about the woe. So you have to be sharp yeah. and look at the verbiage and the mm -hmm. words and understand, okay, this is talking about the first woe or the fourth church right. or, you know, so you definitely got to, you yeah. got to be paying attention. It's a, it's you can't just study. Yeah. And it's the not... woes are within the trumpets. Yeah. Right. And the trumpets, what do they represent? The judgment. The judgment on his church through... Uh, the last 2,000 years of history, right? right. And, uh, you know, as we've studied the churches and seals and trumpets, you don't want to get lost in that principle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because then we start attaching these fanciful ideas, uh, the, the fascinating conspiracies, you know, that are, that are in the, the world today, and uh, we forget to keep them um, in order just like God gave them to, to us. So let's notice, uh, open up your Bibles. We'll go through these. And... Uh, We'll start at Revelation chapter 8, verses 12 and 13. Revelation 8, 12 and 13. Let's read. We'll go through all these. And you can make little notes in your Bibles if you do that. We're in what chapter? Revelation 8. eight. Revelation 8. Okay. Revelation chapter 8. And then, Savannah, let's have verse 12 and 13. It says, Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck a third of the moon and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine and likewise the night. And I looked and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. So Revelation 8, 12 describes the end of the fourth trumpet Verse 13, when the fourth trumpet is blown, 
there's an announcement of the three woes that are coming. Mm -hmm. In Revelation 9, 1 through 11, the first woe are the events of the first of the fifth trumpet. So let's go ahead and read these texts here. Revelation chapter 9, verses 1 through 11, Paul. And it says, Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Mm -hmm. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair and their teeth were like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months, and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. Mm. Now raise your hand if you understand all that. Huh? <laughs> Jess? Kit. That counts. Yep. Like, no. Adjusting your sunglasses count. <laughs> Any hand movement counts. Um, we want to remember here, what, what trumpet has sounded? The fifth. The fifth, the fifth trump trumpet. Okay, so that would be in parallel with which seal? The fifth the seal. The fifth seal and what church? The fifth, the fifth church. church. Does, doesn't that already make it easier? Mm -hmm. You know, what was, what was the condition of the church? What was the fifth church? The fifth church. Ephesus is one, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis. Okay? And what time period did the fifth church cover? This is some good, like, refresher for us. <laughs> right. Is that time? Look, once you get the timeline of the churches in your head, you've got the timeline of the seals in your head and the timeline of the trumpets in your head. Okay? So you have... The Church of Thyatira, what uh, you had, uh, what horse does that represent in the seals? Do you remember? Pale. That's right. Pale. The pale horse, right? The 1260 years of papal dominion. Okay. Now, as you study the characteristics of the church, the seals, and the trumpets, it's important to remember that though there's a timeline really associated with them, it helps us uh, remember the historical events, um, they overlap in character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, you can look at the time period of the apostolic movement from when the day of Pentecost started and, and the gospel was going to the church first and then the stoning of Stephen in 34 AD. You know, so you have this big apostolic push and then you have Smyrna, the persecuted church which would be your early 4th century, 303 to 313-ish. But were people being persecuted? Yes. Mm -hmm. Look, the disciples, sans John, were all martyred, martyred. Mm -hmm. long before Smyrna. Do you get what I mean? So it's not, we have this amazing historical timeline, but you see characteristics that do overlap. So Sardis would be the church after Thyatira. Thyatira would have reigned or ruled or been in the historical timeline of the, seven, the 1260 years, okay? Hmm. When did those 1260 years begin? Uh, Bible I, math, I, woo! This is just timeline, you don't even have to ask. 38? Something. Yes, <laughs> were you asking? <laughs> no, I was I trying to. You were to, saying, yeah, yeah, 538. 538? Plus 1260 equals? 1798. 1798. <laughs> Uh, it shows you like we got the I, answers. We're like, we got end dates, you know, but right. is it this one? Um, it'd be 1798. So uh, when you look at papal dominion, 
and we've studied this and we'll continue to study this, you know, and what took place in historically 538, um, what happened in 1798. Do you remember what happened? What, what was going on in the time period of 1798? Like really that decade the before. Pope French was, Revolution. Um, yeah, what you call it? the Pope was arrested, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. By uh, Napoleon's General Berthier, but the French Revolution was taking place, okay? So during the end of Thyatira, if you will, or Papal Dominion, you have uh, the French Revolution taking place and in our church timeline, the Church of Sardis would be next. Now, the Church of Sardis is, uh, the name means escaping. Uh, Jesus says, he, he, to summarize, he's like, you're living off the reputation of, of uh, your roots, where yeah. you came from, right? Pro- he's talking to Protestant churches. You know, like you're, you're living off the reputation of, of um, Martin Luther, mm. but you're dead. You look alive but you're dead, right? You're, you're alive in name, but in actions, you're dead. And it's, it's interesting because when you look at the Adventist church, Ellen White says that uh, specifically, and if you study the churches, you can see that Laodicea is, a, that the Adventist church is, is what's connected with Laodicea, yeah. right? It's not talk, we're not, the Adventist church is not Babylon, you know, mm-hmm. and that's uh, something to understand. But uh, when you see the characteristics of Laodicea, what's, what's the issue that Laodicea has? They're neither hot or cold. Yeah. Yeah. You're the gray area. Lukewarm. How many people have, have you talked to in the last, just, just think about in the last couple of months where somebody's brought up, it's like the yin and the yang. Yeah. You ever seen a, a, a yin and yang? Yin yang? Mm-hmm. Symbol. Is it yin, just yin yang? Yin and yang. Yin yang. Yin yang. Yin yang. Yin yang. Yin yang. So the white side has a black dot. The black side has a white dot. Mm-hmm. What happens when you mix white and black? Gray. gray. It's a gray area. Yeah. Yin yang represents gray area. You know, oh, and every bit of good, there's evil. Every bit of evil, you're good. Jesus does not accept that answer. Mm-hmm. And he, he calls vomit. it vomit. Yeah. That's what, and I asked this question, does, does God, does Jesus save a Laodicean? No. How do you know? Because he spews a Laodicean out of his mouth. And do you know what vomit is? It's what your body rejects. It's not accepted. Yeah. He saves you from being Rejected. Laodicean. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he wants you to be the church of brotherly love. He wants you to have all the positive aspects and characteristics that you see in the seven churches. Mm-hmm. Laodicea is the only church there's nothing good to say about. But you know what's amazing is Jesus tells you how to, how to fix it. Mm-hmm. Right. But when you look at Sardis, so this would be church five, right? Sardis, uh, Philadelphia, Laodicea. We look at Sardis, they're still living on the reputation of their Protestant forefathers, if you will. Mm. You know, I'm Baptist, I'm Methodist, you know, and you, you see this. And, and I see it in, in, in our church, too. You know, we live uh, on the reputation, but are we a fig tree with leaves and no fruit? You know, like, come look, but in reality, we're dead, right? Right. So when you look at this time period and you see where Thyatira is going into Sardis, you, you see the event that's taking place here is the French Revolution. I want you to keep that in mind when you study trumpet number five. So you see all of this exotic hybrid bug animal. <laughs> it's easy to be like blah, 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 next chapter, right. I have no idea. But then you hear people, because we don't study it, they're gonna throw ideas out. Mm-hmm. They're gonna tell you what the locusts represent or what the scorpion represents. They're going to have a mind, uh, an earthly mind uh, to try to describe it. But because we built the foundation of the churches and the seals, we know that um, it's got to be talking about the French Revolution. So let's continue on with a few more verses, and then we'll talk more about that on the next page. So the first woe are the events of the fifth trumpet. Revelation 9, 1 through 11, the first woe are the events of the fifth trumpet. Now, Revelation 9, 12, Savannah, if you'll read that text for us. Now? Okay. You sounded like you were going to say something I know. Else. We both cut each other <laughs> off. Like, One woe is past. Behold, still two more woes are coming after these things. So when the events of the fifth trumpet conclude, the text tells us that the first woe is what? Finished. That it's finished. It's done. But there's still two more. Yeah. Okay. So, Paul, Revelation, same chapter, mm-hmm. verses 13 through 21. 
Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and the day and the month and the year were released to kill a third of mankind. Mm. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them, and thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions. Here we go with I know, amalgamation I know. beats. Amalgamations. Yeah. I'm already <laughs> biting my tongue. <laughs> and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails are like serpents having heads. With them they do harm. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their thefts. Mm. All right, raise your hand if you understand that. Huh? <laughs> you literally raise your hand again right to, <laughs> to wipe your eyeball this time. Uh, it sounds like the same, right? Yeah. And I'm biting my tongue because of just what, what I've heard people say, what they think, you know, right. the relevance of the 200 million horsemen, you know. They're trying trying to cross a river, right. you know. A, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, horse, that's a lot of horses. It's a lot, that's of, horses. Horses. a lot of horses. It, look, is this symbolic or is this literal? Symbolic. symbolic. Definitely and we know symbolic. that because of what we've been studying. Okay, and it's important that we um, we are consistent in our Bible study method. Yep. Okay. So the description of the sixth trumpet. When this trumpet concludes in verse twenty-one, there is no reference to the second woe passing. So this seems to indicate that chapters 10 and 11 have more to say about the period of the sixth trumpet. Mm. What does Randy Skeet say? Micros Think microscopically, <laughs> right? So, so don't, don't be afraid of it. Tie it together, because in Revelation 10, I'll have uh, Savannah read, uh, well, do you want to read the whole chapter? Sure. Uh, through, 10 that's a long, uh, you'd 13. go through the so, 10 and then I'll do 11 okay. uh, through 13, or verse 13. I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun and his feet like pillars of fire. He had a little book open in his hand, and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land, and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars. When he cried out, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now when the seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered, and do not write them. And the angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in it, and the sea and the things that are in it, that there should be delay no longer. But in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, when he was about to sound, the mystery of God would be finished, as he declared to his servants the prophets. Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. So I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take and eat it, and it will make your stomach bitter, but the, be as sweet as honey in your mouth. Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and it was sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. And he said to me, you must prophesy against them about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. That chapter is like, uh, like a movie trailer, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> it's like, uh, can't wait. We're studying in our Daniel study, uh, chapters 8 through 12. And I don't know if you caught that. Just a little bit of a wet the appetite, yeah. you know, about the little book that's open in Revelation chapter 10. And Daniel, Daniel. is told to seal up a little book. Mm -hmm. Until what? 
the time, time the of the end. Not the end of time. We time talk about how important it is reading the verse, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the detail on there. Mm -hmm. um, then you get a little chiastic structure, which I think is too, really right. pretty cool too, you know, in nine. It says, give me a little book and it says, take it, eat it. It'll be bitter in your stomach, stomach sweet, sweet in your mouth. mouth. And what's John say? So I took the book and it was sweet, sweet in and then bitter. See yep. the chiastic structure? Mm -hmm. Ah, Revelation 10 is so awesome. Mm -hmm. What trumpet's taking place here? The sixth still. Fifth. Yeah, the sixth. Yeah, see, verse 7 kind of threw you, didn't it? It says, but in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, when he is what? Mm, about to about sound. About to sound. Does that mean he sounded yet? No. Nope. No. And that's, that verse, I had to chew on that for a while when I was studying this uh, out in Fresno. Um, it took me a few days, you know, to really understand that. But six trumpet lines up with what church? The sixth. What church is the sixth church? Yeah. Philadelphia. Y'all answer like it's a question though. You're like, Philadelphia? Philadelphia. 538 for that. Uh -huh. Pergamon. <laughs> Correct, but, you know, um, Church of Philadelphia. What time period in church history did the Church of Philadelphia cover? From 1798 to 1844. No. I don't close know. though. You're close. Let me give you another hint. The Feast of Trumpets is what number feast in the Hebrew religious calendar? Six. 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 See, question. Six. Six. Say it with <laughs> conviction. Six. And if you're wrong, then own it. You know, yes, it's six. That must be a coincidence, right? Can't. Mm. Of course. Now, what did the Feast of Trumpets announce? The Day, day of, of Atonement. Atonement. Okay, and what does the Day of Atonement represent? The end. Jesus what returns. begins, what takes place on judgment. the Day of Atonement? Judgment. judgment. Mm -hmm. So the Feast of Trumpets announced that judgment was about to begin. How long was the Feast of Trumpets? Ten days. No, I don't know. You were right. <laughs> Ten, Ten days. days. Say it like you just Ten own days. it. If you're wrong, own Ten it. Days. Ten days. I don't know. I think like what's a day representing Bible prophecy? A year. A year. A year. What yeah. movement announced that judgment was about to begin. The Millerite movement. And when did the Millerite movement begin? 1833. Because remember, they got the year zero wrong, so yep. they thought Jesus was coming when? 1843. Yep. And then like, oh, we messed that up. Uh, mm -hmm. It'll be next year, and then he didn't come. They're like, all right, we gotta, yeah, we, we gotta get back to our books here. We Isn't that amazing, fun. though? So the Feast of Trumpets announced the Day of Atonement's coming. It's 10, 10 years the Millerite movement is. And then uh, you have uh, what took place uh, with, the, with the Day of Atonement, the actual Day of Atonement. Trumpets, 10 days, Millerite movement, 10 years that take place. The sixth trumpet represents what part in earth's history, in church history? The Millerite movement. Mm. What's taking place during that time? That's pretty spectacular. Mm. Because when we look at the Bible and we read these things that are, quite frankly, Extremely difficult to understand if you just open up your Bibles to Revelation 8 or 9 and start reading about all these different colored scorpions and locusts and, and horsemen with fire. It sounds like something out of a movie, you know, modern movie, yeah. you know, and that's what a lot of people want to twist it to, you know, like something that you can actually see. But he's showing us so much more. So when we think microscopically, mm -hmm. when we search the scriptures, it's important we know the time which this is taking place because it helps zero in on what exactly is being talked about here. Now, we're going to address more of these. Right now, we're kind of just going through the woes. But to continue on, let's look at verse uh, Revelation chapter 11, and I'm going to go through verse uh, 13, Paul. Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple, temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. But leave out the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles. And they will tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy 1,260 days. Should all sound familiar? Yep. Clothed in sackcloth. Mm -hmm. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the God of the earth. 
And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if, any, if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy, and they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all the plagues as often as they desire. When they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. Mm. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Then those from the people's tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days Mm. and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make merry, and send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. Now, after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here, and they ascended to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies saw them. In the same hour, there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. In the earthquake, 7,000 people were killed, and the rest were afraid and gave glory to the God of heaven. Let's say 14 real quick here. And verse 14, the second woe is past. Behold, the third woe is coming. How many understood that? (laughs) I don't know, but it's terrifying. Yeah, if we're in the sixth trumpet, what's it talking about the 1260 years for? Hmm. Did anybody ask themselves that question? Like, how can we be talking about this? That's why it can be confusing that when this you're is, reading this. That's right. It, doesn't it seem like that? But since we've studied the seals and the trumpets, where we've studied this far, is there a continuation of that beast mode power, if you will, that rain destruction for 1260 years, three and a half days, 42 months, time, times and a half a time. Is it awakened? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does the wound get healed? Yes. And what does it do when the wound's healed? It continues the work that it was doing. Yeah. Does the same thing. Remember, the, cha- the chapter's being connected. Remember the, the martyrs that are like, we want justice. Yep. From the 1260 years Wait of persecution. Yeah, that's right. 1260 years of persecution. They're crying out. For justice, and what does Jesus tell him? Wait a little longer. Hold on. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> you got your robes. Right. There's more to come, yeah. right? There's actually going to be more people uh, that will be in that category of martyrs. Mm. You know, So when we're studying, let's be uh, diligent. diligent. Let's be consistent um, and use what we've learned from these previous. This is hard if you're just coming mm-hmm. into this right now. You're like, yeah. what are they, oh, yeah. What's it even being talked about? You've got to build that foundation mm-hmm. um, that brings us here. So Revelation, uh, uh, Revelation 11, 2 through 6 takes us back to the period of the 1260 years, 538, 1798, the fourth trumpet. Revelation 11, 7 through 10 describes the French Revolution. How many have a great controversy? Afraid to raise their hands too. Uh, do true? I have the I great it. controversy? I got one. <laughs> Maybe I have the great controversy. There's an excellent chapter in there called the French Revolution. Mm. You can even get uh, if you do get a history book on it, get one that's from the time of the French Revolution. You know, I'm I'm a little wary of modern history books. You know, right. like you can still find old history books. Um, go ahead. I know A.T. Jones has one and. Um, and of course, uh, the great controversy. But you know that the French Revolution, what took place there, is going to happen again, mm-hmm. but on a global scale. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting. As um, Paul was reading, there was a reference to Sodom and Egypt. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sodom has been destroyed, mm-hmm. right? For a long time. You remember the Lot episode? Yep. I mean, that's like the book of Genesis. Yep. It's a long time ago. Oh. Is it talking about literal Sodom? No. no. Or spiritual Sodom, spiritual Sodom, right? Spiritual Egypt. This is where we get to learn more about that. Okay, so you have the description of the French Revolution when the two witnesses were killed. 1793 through 1797, the fifth trumpet and the first woes. Now, Revelation 
11 verses 11 through 12 describe the resurrection of the two witnesses. <laughs> what are, who are the witnesses? The Old and New Testament. The Old and New Testament. Because who do they witness of? Jesus. Of Jesus. If it doesn't witness of Jesus. It's no witness at all. Yeah, it's no witness. <laughs> yeah, that's, throw it out. Yeah. I mean, going to witness protection program right. or something. The false witness. It's false, a false witness. false witness. If it doesn't witness of Jesus, it's, it's a the false, false witness. Yes. Okay. So it says that the they no longer testify in sackcloth. What color is sackcloth? Gray. Black. 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 Darkness. Was God's word trampled upon? Was it hidden? Was it covered with darkness? Oh man, and. Uh, uh, Ellen White says, if Jesus uh, hadn't been, if he wasn't our high priest keeping the lamps burning, they surely would have gone out if they were under the care of men. Mm. But that's how dark, they, it's called the dark ages yep. the for black, a reason. The black horse. The, the black horse and then the pale horse. Right. Okay, so your Pergamum infiltration into um, death, right? The yeah. scarcity, uh, the starvation. This. They no longer testify in sackcloth, but rather enjoy great power and prestige. This miraculous resurrection of what? The Bible not only describes the establishment of multiple Bible societies in the aftermath of the French Revolution, it also portrays a great Advent awakening and the renewed study of Bible prophecy because the little book of Daniel, chapter 8 through 12, you want more? We got a playlist. Join us on Friday night. The little book of Daniel was what? Opened. was opened at the time of the end and because of its opening what was the result prophecy knowledge was increased knowledge was increased and prophecy increased it's not talking about spaceships nope it's not talking about cell phones whatever iphone it's at now 14. it is it's at whatever one is after the one you just bought right. that's what it's at yeah. what increased knowledge knowledge prophecy. of what the bible, the bible. prophecy what did what did Savannah? What prophecies, uh, Sharon? Yeah, and Daniel, and what Savannah read in chapter 10. What, what, is, uh, what is he told to do? Prophesy again. Mm -hmm. What does that tell you about where we're at in Earth's history here? There's still time to preach what? The gospel. The gospel. Yeah. So clearly this is before Jesus comes. This just tramples the idea of futurism. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What was yeah. your thought, Paul? Well, I was, I was just thinking it's interesting, though, how Satan always has his counterfeit knowledge. Because at the time in 1844, you had this great prophecy revealed, Darwin. but you also had yeah. Darwinism right. and Evolution. these other spiritualistic yeah. ideas blowing up yeah. at the same time. So Satan always has his counterfeit. He has his counterfeit. Well, and you have to think, too, is that we know that when the Bible's talking about and knowledge shall increase, it's talking about prophetic knowledge. But from a secular point of view, and knowledge shall increase, just look at us 50 years ago and how much technology and scientific knowledge has increased as well. And so going that along counterfeit. with that is yeah. that you have that, not counterfeit because I'm, it's science, and, but you have that other parallel revealing of that that would de try and detract from the prophetic knowledge. Yeah, a world a worldly a perspective view, yeah. you're like we think we're smarter yeah. no we are so much more dumb that's why they, <laughs> I couldn't, they I was keep like, having to make the iphone dumber? better yeah. <laughs> to make up for our yeah <laughs> we're not smarter because we have iphones we're actually dumber yeah. yeah seriously how many of you have like more than 10 phone numbers memorized yeah i have five how many of you had a rotary phone once uh, 100, years. 100 years ago. <laughs> oh. And you remembered every number. Yes, you remember. Just remember about there. That was before they had 10 digits number, then. Right? There's just three numbers to call your neighbor. <laughs> One, two, three. You just called the operator. Look, yeah, yeah <laughs> operator. Call the operator. operator. I'd like to talk to this person. Hold, please. I just punch that in. Look, the not, what, is the not, what knowledge increases in prophecy specifically? When we read that text, in Daniel chapter 12, he's told to seal up the words. In Revelation chapter 10, the angel, who by the way is Jesus in this, mm -hmm. he has the book, a little book that's open. What's the book that's open? Daniel. Daniel. What specific part of Daniel? Chapters 8 through 12. 
which deals with what? The end of time. The cleansing of the sanctuary. Look, it's the, the day of judgment is about to begin. The announcement. So why did, Dave, why did uh, Daniel have to close the book up, seal up the scroll in, in Daniel chapter 12? It wasn't for his time. It wasn't even for John's time because John says, I was about to write what I had seen. What the thunderings had said. What did he see? 1844. Cleansing of the temple. Does that give you goosebumps? Look, mm -hmm. you had a big old goosebumps. Yeah. It wasn't for John's time either. Mm -hmm. So he had to eat the book. How was it in his belly? Bitter. Bitter, Bitter disappointment. What's the sweetness? of that message. Jesus is coming. That knowledge would increase, that the sanctuary, that judgment would begin, and it's that much closer to Jesus' return. How amazing is Daniel chapter 8 through 12 and then in Revelation chapter 10. Revelation chapter 10 is the parallel chapter you study with Daniel chapter 8 through 12. Mm -hmm. Revelation 10 is the Millerite movement. And, I, and because of the bitter disappointment in 1844, what movement came out of that? Adventist. Yeah. Revelation chapter 10 is a chapter that's prophetic of the Seventh-day Adventist church. It shows that God would raise up a church to proclaim his end time message. Mm -hmm. How amazing is that? That's the kind of stuff that gets me up mm -hmm. to study for this. Okay. Revelation 11:13 introduces the two groups that will exist in the end of time. The first group are the enemies of the two, the two witnesses. witnesses. The enemies were two. The previous context identifies the first enemy as the Gentiles. The second enemy is the beast from where? The bottomless, the bottomless pit. pit. Revelation uses the word enemies only twice, and both references are in chapter 11, verses 5 and 12. In the first instance, the enemies obscured the two witnesses. How? By forbidding the Bible during the 1260 years. In the second instance... The enemies killed the two witnesses at the end of the same period. Now, how were they killed at the, uh, the end of the same period? What took place at the end of the 1260 years? How important is it to understand the timeline? Yeah. When you've got it down, the French Revolution takes place. Did the French Revolution, was it an enemy of God's word? Yes. Yeah, and you think, well, I thought it was kind of a good thing because, you know, they, they stopped the tyranny of, of papal dominion. You know, but they were sick of the Bible and the wars and all the fighting. And out of the French Revolution comes atheism. The goddess of reason. They swung the goddess of the reason way. in the age of enlightenment. It, right. No. How'd that work out? Yeah. It has not worked out. Just look where we are now. Was it an enemy of the Bible? Yes. But in a different way. Yeah. Do you know? And isn't that interesting? So Satan's like, you're talking about the counterfeit. He's like, oh, I've got this. God's always a step ahead. Satan's a loser. Yep. God always, he's always got something else planned. Amen. And when Satan says, man, I've had 1260 years of, of dark ages, forbidding the Bible, persecutions. I got the French Revolution coming. Mm -hmm. They're slaughtering Catholics, the French Revolution. They're uh, slaughtering Christians. This couldn't get any better. And God's like, oh, the two witnesses are going to thrive now. Yeah. And you have this amazing movement, the Millerite movement, the Advent movement, all this Bible study comes to mind. Right. And it just shows that God always wins. Mm. Amen. You know, Satan thought he had defeated, um, had, had uh, suppressed God's word once and for all. That doesn't happen. Revelation, uh, the second group is the remnants. Okay, we had two groups. So you have the enemies of the two witnesses, which were two of them, Gentiles and the beasts from the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. And then the second group is the remnant who fear God and do what? Give glory, Give glory. to Give glory him. Give glory to Him. A clear literary link to what message? The three angels' message. To the three angels' messages. What other church proclaims the three angels' message? None. Are there other churches that have their services and observe the Sabbath? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are. Is there any other church that preaches the Sabbath from the three angels' messages? No. Mm -hmm. Fear God. Give glory to Him. For the hour, of the hour of his what? Judgment. Is there a lack of understanding across the Christian world of judgment? Very Such a perverted so. perspective of what judgment really is, right? Judgment's been taking place since 1844. Judgment begins where? At the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You're not taught that, are you? 
Nope. Fear God, give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. And worship Him. Who? Made. Created the or made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the fountains of the deep. That's King James Version. It says referencing creation, the, the seventh day, Sabbath, and the flood. Right? The first mm -hmm. time you see that expression. Isn't that amazing? What other church teaches that? This is the end time message. Look at the order that we're studying in Revelation here. We've, we've been able to see the churches, seals, and trumpets. We're continuing in the trumpets. And then you get into chapter 12. We get a, a crash course history lesson mm -hmm. from the Old Testament church to the New Testament church, all the way to Satan, warring with the remnants overseas, those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Is this the same story? I don't want to say story, but is this the same scenario? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's where, where, we're, where we're at now is the same scenario as before with history repeating itself. We should be grateful that this is the last loop, yeah. if you will, of history repeating itself. There's no reason we shouldn't know where we're at today, what's going on in the world, where Jesus is at, and what's going to take place in the near future. He's given, given it to us over and over and over. You read the points in the Old Testament. You read points in the New Testament. Let's go ahead and finish this up here. Uh, the three angels message, Revelation 14, verse 7. You have other texts in your syllabus there. And then Revelation 11, 14. After the resurrection of the Bible and the mention of the enemies and the remnant, the text tells us the second woe is past. That's the text that Paul read, verse 14. So the sixth trumpet presents the negative side, the perspective of the enemies, of end time events, and Revelation 10 presents the positive side. What's the positive side of Revelation 10? The remnant. The remnants, and what's their job? To proclaim, to proclaim. the gospel of Jesus. Yeah. Prophesy again. Woohoo! Time is not up nope. yet. The not seventh yet. trumpet is about to sound. And uh, we'll talk about that because that's actually prophetic time there. Mm. That, uh, that, that represents a part in Earth's history. The trumpet about to sound, about to sounding, <laughs> trumpet about to sound is actually a prophetic uh, uh, historical event in this Earth's history. Okay, um, expressed another way, the sixth trumpet. Okay, Revelation 10 presents the positive side, the perspective of the remnant of the same period. So it's talking about the same period, but and you're going to see this with, Reve with Revelation. You know, the millennium talked about uh, in Revelation chapter uh, 20. The first half of it talks about the perspective of the, uh, of the saints. The second part of that chapter is a perspective of the wicked. Like God, God shows us both. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not just, uh, he's not the one that's just trying to hide anything else. Oh, it's just this. He's like, right. this is, these are the saints. This is walking after the spirit this is righteousness this is what holiness is this is wickedness this is what evil is this is what disobedience is god's always revealing to us his character and the more we know his character who else's character is revealed satan's yeah. he's he's completely exposed right. he's been exposed as a fraud to the entire universe what are we still what's still up in the air with us I don't which, know. Which side we're on. Yeah, what side we're on. It's still, and why, are we still, why do we still have a message to proclaim? Because people haven't made decisions yet. Doesn't that seem sad? Every week we come here, you know, to worship or the other studies we're doing, it's like, man, we've got to be um, asking for people to make decisions. The sixth trumpet carries us from 1844 all the way to the close of probation. Now, what date is the close of probation? When you die. <clears throat> it should be a big old red light. That, yes, die. when you die, or I don't know. There's no more time setting, right? We don't, we don't do that. When probation closes, when the mystery of God is finished. What is the mystery of God? What's the mystery of God? Oh, where did we talk about this before? Was it in this class? Probably. The mystery of God. The gospel mm. is the mystery of God. Because what does the gospel encompass? The plan of? Salvation. Why is that a mystery? How could God want us to be with him forever when all we've done is turn our back on him? Isn't that a mystery? Yeah. Isn't that a wonderful mystery? That's the mystery that we're supposed to be teaching people. It's the mystery of the gospel. Here's the good news. In light of how horrible we are, Jesus has shown us a way out of that right. so that Amen. we can be saved. So the mystery of God, when it's finished, when the gospel has been proclaimed to the ends of the earth, 
This occurs when the seventh trumpet is about to sound. When the seventh trumpet sounds, Jesus takes over the kingdoms of the world at his coming. The blast of the trumpet is the third woe. Mm. So hopefully the woes, we can, I think we'll get into more about the, uh, all the symbols. Yep. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know if we'll ever really fully understand no. all of them. You know, um, it's, it's interesting. Even the classes I've taken on this, it's, you know, like partial understanding. Some of it's just like, you know. I'm not sure what the significance of this color is or, you know, right. or that every word in here is here for a reason, but there's a lot to learn is what helps us understand this understanding where this falls in the chronological timeline mm -hmm. of earth's history. Where are we now? What sixth. trumpet are we in now? The sixth. In the sixth trumpet. We don't think about that. So that means that the other five trumpets have already blasted. So when someone approaches you and says, yeah, you want to know what the seven trumpets are? Yeah, when like, the new sure, president's elected, you can be like, eh, you know, it's like, no, yeah. we're in the sixth trumpet now. When the probation closes, then the seventh trumpet's about to sound because what takes place after probation closes? Come on, you know this, Bible study students. Michael stands up, okay, stands what's up. taking place on earth? Yeah, there's tribulation, well, what kind? After probation closes, because what does probation closing signify? God's people have been marked with the seal of God. Mm -hmm. They're going to be protected. Those who have Plagues. not followed God will have the mark of the beast on their hand or on their forehead and will be affected by the plagues. Mm -hmm. Let's read a verse real quick. Goosebumps. All right. <laughs> Let's go to 1 Thessalonians. we got a couple minutes. The time period... When the seventh trumpet is about to sound, does about to sound mean it's sounding? Yeah. It's blasting. No, it's not sounding yet. So what does about to sound represent time period wise? Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And Savannah. Hmm, don't tell you me. can't find them. I can't. You. Yep, oh, I found it. Found it. I found it. <laughs> Okay, what were we reading? Will you please read verse 14 through 17. Of what, 4? Yep, First Thessalonians 4, 14, 14 through, through 17. 17. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we are alive and remain, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord." What did you notice about this particular text? What event is Paul describing here? The second coming. The second coming. Did you catch the words? The Lord himself, himself verse 16, will descend from heaven with what? A shout. A shout with the voice of who? The archangel. The archangel with what? The trumpet of God. <laughs> Which trumpet? The seventh trumpet. Oh, how do we know that? Because it says it in Reve Revelation. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that neat? We just always thought like, oh, it's a trumpet. That's cool. <laughs> you know, ah, oh, he's going to shout. And people are going to resurrect. This is taking place during what plague? Second coming is the seventh plague. So what does the about to sound represent? God's coming. The time coming. period from the close of probation till the second coming of Jesus, which covers your plagues. Mm -hmm. You're about to sound. Isn't that fascinating? Isn't that amazing? Please study that more microscopically mm -hmm. so that you can understand better these things that seem uh, so mysterious. But when, when God reveals to us right the secret things, um, it's marvelous, isn't it? Because God only works how? In wondrous ways. <laughs> that's, what we're, that's what Ellen White says, only in wondrous ways. Okay, we'll put a mark there before we get into the perspective of Revelation chapter 12. Mm. This has kind of been a good uh, reboot of the woes which we were studying before, right. and they deserve a lot more attention. 
um, you know, and use your resources and can, compare scripture with scripture. Where else have I heard a trumpet? You know, trumpets were used um, in the Old Testament. It was part of society, you know, for Israel. So it's it's uh, not arbitrary that uh, that they would be used again right. in the end. You know? Well, yeah, you often hear this first use just to describe that the second coming is going to be this loud, boastful event with trumpets. Which but it not will. Realizing, it will. Yeah, which it not will. Not realizing that that trumpet is something special. Yeah, one of the la- it's the last trumpet to sound. Yeah. You know, and what's what's taking place? Oh man, how cool is that? You know, when they would, in Israel they they would blow trumpets different ways, and mm-hmm. it would tell like all the uh, congregation to gather, and if it was blown another way, it would be just the leaders mm-hmm. to gather or whatever. And then like when this the Jesus comes again, it's like who's gathering? Let's go, righteous up! Yeah, everybody right. up! Isn't that awesome? It gathers God's people together. Right. Not a coincidence. Nope. Come on, isn't that awesome? No. My beard got a little longer from all the goosebumps. <laughs> okay, we'll pick up next week uh, the perspective of Revelation chapter 12. Um, continue on, but hey, refresh. I know we're all a little rusty on this here locally, but for those of you on YouTube, um, continue to support us and, and uh, study and provide us your comments and, and um, your perspectives as well. So I'll turn it back over to you then. Sounds good. Thanks for joining us. If- I, I just hit me as you were saying that I did forget to say something in my intro. Check out our social media pages because oh, yeah. we have all kinds of stuff going our up there email. too. You can Left email us to, to... with questions, right? <laughs> <laughs> so please, there's many ways you can get a hold of us if you got questions, comments, or whatever. We we love answering questions. Um, it helps helps us study That's and it helps you study. Yeah. So questions are good. There's no bad questions. So. Um, that's all we got for today. Savannah, would you like to close us with prayer? I'd love to. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another beautiful Sabbath day that we get to come here and study together and learn more about the timeline of salvation. Please be with us throughout the rest of this week until we can come back together and continue our study. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks for watching. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath.